This right here is a very poppy sounding tactile keyboard with some excellent value for the price. This is the EpoMaker EK68 which is a 65% hot swappable south facing keyboard and as of the time of this recording goes for $80.99. In my opinion this keyboard rivals the GK61 and GK68 which are a common first option for custom keyboards. But I think this board might be the better option but first let's look at the keyboard. So inside the box you'll get your keyboard, some extra keycaps, a couple extra switches and this nice braided cable. The actual keyboard is a 65% layout with double shot PBT keycaps and your choice of switch. The switch options are flamingos, which are a more clacky linear switch, this thing, which is a poppy tactile switch, and Gatoron Pro 2.0 yellows, which are kind of a creamy clacky switch depending on if you lube them or not. The build quality of the board is surprisingly good and the top frame doesn't make any squeaky sounds and actually doesn't even budge at all when you push on it. The whole thing has this nice kind of matte finish which I think looks really good. The keyboard also supports wired, bluetooth, and 2.4hz wireless modes and the little dongle for that thing is hidden right here at the top. The volume knob is surprisingly sturdy and actually made of metal which is a definitely a plus. Inside the keyboard are your plate and PCB, which of our course gasket mounted to the plate. There is some foam in between the plate and PCB, along with underneath the PCB. For being gasket mounted, there is definitely a low amount of bounce, which I didn't really find to be too big of a deal, but that's quite subjective. I'd say there's a lot of opportunity to mod this keyboard, which always is a great thing for those who are looking to make this keyboard sound and feel the best it possibly can. So here's what the keyboard sounds like completely stock. Now to get to the bad stuff. Of course, like most basic pre-built keyboards, the stabilizers do have some tick with them. However, I did solve this pretty easy by injecting some 205G0 in them, which completely eliminated it. And it's kind of nice because these little syringes are only like 7 bucks. So I definitely think it's a must to do this if you're going to buy this keyboard. The keyboard of course has a plastic case which may or may not be a pro or con. It really just depends on you and if you need a heavy keyboard or if you really want that premium feel. But I really do think the plastic feels quite strong and sturdy which is definitely a good thing. Unfortunately the keyboard also does not offer a bare bones version yet but I wouldn't be surprised if they come out with this in the future. Lastly, for the bad stuff, the gasket mount is definitely hard to notice, but still gives you that nice and even sound that gasket of course produces. So why do I think this board is better than the other budget options like the GK61 or the GK68? I think the main point comes down to the cost. The EK68 comes with keycaps and pre-lubed switches, which the other boards come in a barebone version, which means you still have to buy the keycaps and switches this will most likely bring the price up past the EK68. If you're looking for the least amount of work to make your keyboard sound good, I would definitely pick the EK68. However, if you're looking into getting into the custom keyboard hobby in general, I would try and pick barebone versions, so that's where the GK61 and GK68 would come in handy. However, that's basically the only reason I'd buy the other keyboards. The EK68 still offers an amazing amount of mods, and just to test the differences, I added some extra foam into the bottom of the case to decrease the hollowness. I also tape modded the PCB and lastly injected some lube into the stabilizers. And here's what the modded version sounds like. 